Okay, so today we're going to start working on this Thomas Edison air conditioner. Uh, yeah, I got this a while ago, a year or two ago. It's another one I've never done anything with. It's been sitting in my basement. So I'm going to take the cover off. We're going to see what's going on in here. I'm thinking this one shouldn't be too bad because, you know, it looks pretty clean. Looks like a maybe a low hours unit we'll see okay I just got the cover off uh, so it, it, there definitely is some rust in the pan nothing terrible it is just definitely rust yeah, nothing serious but it would be nice to paint that well, the, the bottoms of the coils aren't too bad. No rust on the front one. Uh, one nice thing is it's got a... The motor has oil ports on it. So I won't have to take the motor apart. It's a Fasco motor. It's kind of a small looking motor. Uh, what else? Yeah, this has a reciprocating compressor. It's a Copeland. I think you can get the date off of these numbers. I'll look into that later. Uh, yeah, so one of the issues which I already knew about is it's got... It's got a lot of fiberglass in it. Pretty sure this is all fiberglass here. It's kind of crumbly. <laughs> right right there, it's a little crumbly. It goes all the way down here. It goes all the way back behind this capacitor. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to have to replace all this. Even if it wasn't crumbly, I wouldn't want it in there. I don't want fiberglass blowing it in my face. It's kind of a health hazard, I think. So, yeah, I think there's more of it in the cabinet. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of it in the cabinet. Yeah, that's all fiberglass. Pretty sure that's what it is. You know, I'm not like a fiberglass expert, but it looks like it. Yeah, I think that's fiberglass. It's just like black colored. There's a big sheet of it here in the rear. You probably could leave this piece because, you know, it's in the back. I don't know if I have anything this thick replace it with maybe I could leave the, that piece and take the rest of this out yeah the cabinet's not in bad shape the paint's still pretty good on it it's not rusty there's no dents you know it's got some scratches and spots on it I don't know I don't know if these spots will come out or not. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna do some straightening on the back here. Ooh, that's pushed in a lot right there. Yeah, do a little straightening. Okay, so this turned out to be a little more challenging than I thought. Uh, there's really no way to get this uh, firewall piece out. I guess it's welded to the pan. I, there's no there's no screws. Um, there's no screws underneath it. So I'm assuming it's welded to the pan. And this there's no slot or anything to lift this out. So it's like on there permanently. Unless you want to 
cut the refrigerant line, which I'm not going to do. Yeah, so... <laughs> okay, so this turned out to be quite an ordeal. Uh, so I got two choices here to get move this out. I can either try to bend bend these pipes out which I think would work you know I don't worried about breaking these solder joints uh, now the the other problem yeah there's the hole for that it's the holes not even very big uh, the other problem I started taking the compressor nuts off and this one, this one had two nuts on it. Uh, this nut was on top of that nut. Which was odd. The other ones have one nut. Uh, anyway, I got the top nut off and the bottom one just spins. There seems to be no threads at the bottom. So, it seems like they did that intentionally when they made this that's why they had two bolts on this you know the top bolt holds this one down and there's just no threads here I, I tried prying it with it you know from underneath with a screwdriver and still can't get it off it just spins uh, so I don't know what else to do uh, I went out and bought a nut splitter so I am just going to break that nut off. Uh, <laughs> I guess they didn't want you working on this thing when they made it. You, you know, so otherwise you, you can't change these compressor mounts. Um, you can't do anything, you know. I'm going to try to leave this in because my only other option to get the... the you know, if I can't bend the radiator out enough. And it, uh, I don't think I can even lift this up very far. I'm not, it's not going to lift up far enough to change these compressor mounts. You know, because this tube is in the way here. But you, I'm going to try to bend this stuff and <laughs> I'm going to try to do it. Because my only other option here is to, to cut this. Just make a cut right up here. So I can lift everything out. Which I, I may have to do that. Um, it, there's the hole there. The other problem is you gotta, I got a screw here. And there's another screw that goes right here. So... It, the holes right there, so I'd have to like cut in between these screws. Yeah, I may have to do that. Everything's in here really tight. Okay, so we're making a little progress on this. Uh, I got this nut off. I had to split it off, and it, it, there's only like two or three threads at, at the top of this thing. It, I guess this is how they made it, so... Hopefully I didn't damage the what's left here and I can still get a, that nut on the top. I guess I'll just put two nuts on again, like, like they had it. Ugh, i never seen anything like this. Alright, uh... Yeah, so I ended up bending this out like so and I just got the plastic out and I got the squirrel wheel off this is the smallest squirrel wheel I've seen it's quite heavy though it's real you know, this is solid galvanized squirrel wheel it's very small weird Okay, so I made a little progress here. 
uh, I don't really remember what I filmed and what I didn't, so it's it going to be hard to piece this together, but uh, anyway, I pulled this out, uh, I scraped, scraped all the fiberglass out of the front here, got the pieces over here, so I can probably use these as templates, and cut some new pieces of foam. Um, there's not really any adhesive on here, really, that I can feel. If they used adhesive on that, it was really light. I don't really feel anything, so. Uh, I'm just going to probably sand it and wash it. That's all I'm going to do with it. As long as it's clean, I can stick the foam on there. Uh, what else? Oops. I did get the compressor mounts replaced. Uh, it was pretty tough getting the getting those in there. I could barely lift it up past the stud. I had to use a crowbar to lift it up. Anyway, I got all three of those replaced. Now uh, here's the old mounts here. This one's pretty much useless. It, it, must have slipped off. You know, I noticed when I was running this, when I turned it up, the compressor off, it kind of shook. So that's probably from this, because it had come off. Uh, anyway, two of these were in really bad shape. This one, this one's all sunken in. They're all kind of stiff and dry, so they're. They were no good. So that's that should be a huge improvement, just doing that. Okay, so I'm almost finished now. Uh, I'm pretty much all done with the, the chassis here. Uh, what I ended up doing, I just painted the, the bottom with rust primer. I just painted it by hand. Uh, yeah, it was, it was too difficult, you know. Um, this piece, the fan shroud is fixed in the pan, and so is this firewall. Everything's welded to the pan. Plus, I can't get this out. I don't know if it would, it would have been better off cutting this. I'm not sure. Anyway, I pretty much got everything done, though. The rust primer should help keep the rust down for a while anyway uh, yeah so I got all the mounts replaced uh, I ended up putting putting this back the way they had it from the factory uh, I put a bigger bolt a bigger nut on here on the bottom uh, this one's catching it's catching on the top here this the top nut uh, so this bigger one I can just lift on and off. I won't have to split it. Uh, it you know, these don't crank down on the on the mounts. There's like a stop here on the stud. The, uh, the, the washer rests on the the stopper part on the stud. So it's, it's not like cranking down tight on here. This is how they have it. So it, it should be fine like this. I'm not worried about it. I'm just, I'm glad that nut went on. Um, what else? I oiled the motor. Uh, I, I never took the motor out or anything. I just stuck some oil in those ports. And put a generous amount in there. Uh, reused the old putty that was here. It's actually still soft soft and sticky so oh I ended up yeah I got all the fiberglass out I got the foam in it came out pretty good uh, yeah it's a little tricky you know, cutting this and getting it to fit right in here it's it's a little tricky it's not as easy as you would think um, I did. I managed to get the 
this plastic vent piece pushed out and pushed back in it's actually still stays on which is good uh, I got the vent hooked up here you know, this just presses against the door and it springs open by itself so yeah I got the coil straightened off Uh, you can turn the fan on, I guess. That's just the fan, that's high fan. Low fan. Yeah, it seems to be running pretty good. Alright, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put the cover back on. I still gotta make the side panels. And we'll come back, fire up the compressor. Should run pretty smooth now. All right, I'm all finished with the Thomas Edison. McGraw Edison. Uh, yeah, so I ended up putting these peel and stick panels on. They don't quite, they didn't quite fit in the uh, the channels here, so I had to cut them just above the channels. Uh, they look all right. Better than nothing. These are real skinny frames. It's the case, case still got spots on it and stuff. They didn't come off. That's all right. It still looks okay. I uh, got the back straightened up. Yeah. So let's start this up. This faceplate's kind of, that's how they make this. It's just, it's not really attached in there. It's just, it's just behind the knobs with some weather stripping on the back. Low cool. They've not run it yet since I put the cover on. Should run better than it did before. Oh, that compressor sounds beautiful. Yeah, this runs beautiful. It's not ice cold yet. It is, it's getting cold. Yeah, this has this, uh, the vent, if you want to change the directions, you have to pop this off and turn it around. It's like manual, ultra manual louvers. I can't see the coil in here anyway. You can't see the sides of the coil. Yeah, it's definitely cold.
nicer with this new foam in it. Yeah, it was all fiberglass before. That, that stuff was real old and musty smelling too. It didn't smell too good. Big improvement, this new phone. Now it's getting cold. What is this? Yeah, it's a 6000 BTU. It's really small air conditioner. This room's nice. It's really quiet. Alright, there's low. High cool. That's it. Just, just two speeds. Low again. Ah. Alright, there you go. That's the... Thomas Edison, all ready to go. I'll see you next time. Okay, I've had this running for a while. I'm just doing a temperature check on it. This is 61.9. 62. It's about, uh, I don't know, it's 80, 84 degrees or something here. It's real humid. So that's probably about right. I, I turned on the that Amana, and that reads about 58. So it's it's probably about right. That's a bigger air conditioner. It's 58, 62. It's probably about right. This thing's really putting out some water. nice so there you go see you next time